Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we will explore the theory of cross-site request forgery and apply our knowledge by solving the Portswiggle Lab titled CSRF Vulnerability with no defenses. To achieve this, we will use a tool called CSRF Proof of Concept Generator, which is provided in Burp Suite Professional. All right, let's jump right in. All right guys, so what is cross-site request forgery or CSRF in short? Well, CSRF is an attack that forces an end user to execute unwanted actions on a web application in which they are currently logged in. To further clarify, picture this. A hacker is crafting a malicious link targeting users that are logged into a vulnerable website. Meanwhile, the victim is logged into the vulnerable website and going about her usual activities. Out of nowhere, she receives a seemingly harmless link and without suspecting anything, she clicks on it. In an instant, the hacker seizes control by changing the victim's email address to his own, effectively taking over the victim's account. So as you probably already guessed, the impact of this attack can be very serious as it causes the victim to perform unwanted actions, such as changing email address, changing password, transferring funds, and so on and so forth. For a CSRF attack to be possible, three key conditions must be met. Firstly, there must be a relevant action. So to enable a CSRF attack, there must be an action within the application that the attacker has a motive to trigger. This action could involve privileged operations, such as modifying permissions for other users or any user-specific action, like altering their own password. Secondly, for a CSRF attack to work, the action should require one or more HTTP requests and the application must rely only on session cookies to identify the user making those requests. There should be no additional mechanisms in place to track sessions or validate the user requests. And the third and final condition is absence of unpredictable request parameters. So the request responsible for carrying out the action must not contain any parameters with values that the attacker cannot determine or guess. For instance, if the attacker needs to know the existing password to make a user change their password, then this function is not vulnerable to CSRF. So this HTTP request satisfies all of the above conditions. The relevant action in this case is to change the user's email address. We can see that it uses cookie-based session handling because we don't see any additional authentication tokens or headers like authorization bearer. The only thing defined is the session cookie. Now this implies that the application relies solely on session cookies to identify the user making the requests. Third, there are no unpredictable values in the request that are difficult for an attacker to guess. All right guys, enough with the theory. Let's go ahead and solve a CSRF lab on Portswigger. So I have already launched a lab called CSRF vulnerability with no defenses, and I have already logged in as Wiener Peter. And as you can see, the email address is wiener at normal-user.net. So the objective is to change wiener's email address to the attacker's email without wiener's knowledge or consent. All right. So how do we start? The first thing we need to do is to turn on the intercept. And let's just set uh, a new email address like silverhack at hacker.com. And then we click on update email. And here we can see that we have captured the post request to the change email endpoint containing the new uh, email address. And what we would like to do now is to right click and then engagement tools and then generate CSRF proof of concept. And if we expand that, so what are we seeing here? We are seeing the post request that we just saw, which includes the new email address. And below we can see the CSRF proof of concept. So let's break it down. We have an HTML form that is used for making HTTP requests. In this case, it is used to perform a post request to the vulnerable application. Inside the form, there is an input with type hidden to hide it from the user. It has the name email and the value silverhack at hacker.com. Now this of course represents the new email address that the attacker wants to set for the victim. And then we have the input element with the type submit. When this button is clicked, it would submit the form, meaning it would trigger the post request. We also have the submit function. This line automatically submits the form on the page without requiring any user interaction. It essentially simulates the victim clicking on the submit request button in the hidden form. 
So to summarize, when a victim loads this proof of concept, their browser will automatically send a post request to change their email address without their knowledge or consent. Of course, provided that they are already logged in to that website. All right, now let's do the fun stuff. Let's see if this proof of concept actually works. All right, so let's go ahead and click on test in browser and let's copy this link and let's navigate to a new tab and paste this link and press enter. Let's wait a little bit here. It's loading. And there you go, guys. Now we can see that the email has in fact changed to silverhack at hacker.com. This means that by luring the victim to visit the page containing the CSRF proof of concept, the hacker managed to successfully change the victim's email address. This action results in the hacker gaining full control over the victim's account without Wiener Peter's knowledge. So in a real pen test engagement, that would have been enough to prove that we have found a CSRF vulnerability. But to solve this lab, we need to do some extra steps. All right, so we need to navigate to exploit server. And as you can see, we have a body here. And what we need to do is to copy the HTML from the CSRF proof of concept. And we want to paste it in the body and then store. And what we need to do now is to view the exploit, basically to simulate the user or the victim uh, navigating to the malicious website. All right, so let's click on view exploit. Now it's loading. And there you go, guys. As you can see, the email has been changed to silverhack at hacker.com, meaning that we have successfully solved this lab. All right, guys, so that is going to be it for this video. I hope you have learned something valuable today. If you want to support this channel, you can like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell. And if you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section. So thanks for watching, guys, and see you in the next one.